of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. PSAP um, in the county, the 911 center uh, at the Rochester City Police Department. Um, we started on this several weeks ago um, and uh, we've, it's been finalized. It uh, needs to be approved by commissioners. Uh, tomorrow, the mayor will take it to city council for ratification and then uh, come back to, to council. So, what this document does that's uh, before you is it replaces an ordinance that's over 27 years old. Seven, um, you probably weren't here, but the, there was an ordinance enacted that uh, created the 911 center uh, as the emergency communication center, and the bulk of that document was the job description of the director, um, and had a uh, little more in it uh, than that. It did create a 911 board, uh, but with no uh, role or responsibility. So uh, this interlocal agreement. It's not an MOU, it's the interlocal agreement because there's a financial component to, you, to it. Um, so it fully consolidates the uh, dispatch responsibilities that the Rochester Police Department has today uh, back into the 911 Center, so they will be uh, the only emergency communications center uh, in the county. It creates a new operations board that serves in an advisory capacity uh, to assist the 911 director in establishing standard operating procedures. Um, for the center, in the past, those policies have been brought to commissioners, um, and in this interlocal agreement um, for the establishment of that ops board, it will be their responsibility uh, to approve operational policies as proposed by the 911 director. Um, the uh, director serves uh, as a county department head, obviously, answers to the board of commissioners and uh, fiscally to um, county council. It incorporates a previously drafted MOU for sharing the Spillman CAD. Uh, if you recall, several weeks ago, there was a, uh, an MOU that had been drafted um, that uh, the Sheriff and the Police Chief were working on uh, for Rochester Police Department to have access to Spillman. It takes that language and incorporates it into uh, this interlocal agreement. The financial uh, contribution, the City of Rochester will pay uh, $100,000 annually to the county for uh, 911 and dispatching services. Um, and they'll also uh, pay the additional fee for um, the CAD access uh, in Spillman. It's effective uh, November the 1st, and it's a four year agreement. So we'll go through October 31st, um, the 28th. The operations board, uh, the membership that board is somewhat different than what has traditionally been here. Um, some of these are virtue of office. They're on the board, others would be appointed. So the operations board uh, will consist of the sheriff, the city police chief, the city fire chief, uh, the county coordinator or designee, one fire chief of a unit within the county appointed by the president of the county fire association board, one police chief or law enforcement officer in the county other than the sheriff and the city police department, and then one representative of EMS, which would be part of it. Um, that seven member board would be the operation advisory board uh, working with uh, the Iowa Board Director. I think that fits the highlights of that agreement. Uh, with that, I'll yield and answer any questions. 
Um, the only one I had what would have is, you know, we're going to do that uh, thing for Brittany tonight on, on personnel. Um, so we, get, we should go ahead and sign that, but hereafter, this board, that, that board, the design here, once this gets up and going, we'll be doing that. Is that correct? Is that how, do I understand that right? Policy? Yes. I think she was going to present to you the EMS policy this evening yes that yeah, we have top, she sent us a copy <clears throat> that you'd be running a little yeah late. yeah yeah she and i discussed that i told her to go ahead and present that to you because it's effective today okay on the passage okay. and then, um, what we will do going forward is that the standard operating procedures that exist need to be reviewed and updated um, and new ones written um, so we will work with Brittany to do that and then the new board okay. will approve those policies as presented So if you do approve that, I need two copies signed. Brady will take those to the mayor in the morning or uh, to the council back on tomorrow, and then they'll come back to the county for the council. Okay. I'll second that. Do we have any other questions or discussion from anybody? Okay, hearing in, uh, all in favor? Uh, motion carries 3-0. services they would like to perform. So um, there's various um, just you we have a comprehensive plan not to exceed thirty five thousand an annual budget assistance and analysis not to exceed twenty five thousand budget one on one training not to exceed twenty five hundred gateway annual report not to exceed eighty five hundred Property tax levy appeals not to exceed 2,500. Um, uh, Reestablish a cumulative fund not to exceed 2,500. They have some time and uh, expense rates here if, if they get in something like that. So that's uh, part of this contract. But like I said, the council then will pick whatever services they would like to use. So. Yeah. By signing this thing, we're not agreeing to nothing until the council says that. Yeah, yeah. But really is, and then it's a la carte. Yeah, and they'll fund it. Right. Whatever. Right. Right. So, does anybody have any questions on that? I hear you're going to entertain a motion to approve the Baker Tilly contract. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries 3 0. Schedule. Um, this year, we'll have, or next year, we'll have 25. We're adding President's Day, um, not election year. So we've got a uh, New Year's Day, Martin Luther King Day, President's Day, Good Friday, Memorial Day, Independence Day, Labor Day, Columbus Day, Veterans Day, Thanksgiving, Lincoln's Birthday Observed, Christmas, and Washington's Birthday Observed. So, any questions on that? Same number we have every year. Okay. Okay, entertain a motion to approve the 25 holiday. So moved. Second. All favor. Motion carries through.
resolution 1021-2024. It's a resolution of the Fulton County Board of Commissioners. <coughs> Uh, the County of Fulton, Indiana, establishing meeting times for 2025. Whereas Fulton County Commissioners have established that they will meet on the first and third Monday of each month at 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. respectively in the Commissioner's meeting room in the Fulton County office building with the exception of when a holiday falls on the first Monday or third Monday uh, and any other special circumstances as necessary. Then we'll do that meet on the next day. Uh, whereas Fulton County Board of Commissioners have established times as set out under the Indiana Code 36-2-2-6. Now therefore be resolved that the Fulton County Commissioners that Fulton County Commissioners have established and that they will meet on the first and third Monday of each month at 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. respectively and in other special circumstances in the Commissioner's meeting room in the Fulton County office building located at 125 East 9th Street, Rochester, Indiana. Thursday, Monday, holiday the Fulton County Commissioners will meet on the following business day. A year of meeting will be held on, held on the last business day of the year at 9 a.m. If other meetings are scheduled, the public will be given notice. Uh, our meeting, yeah, I need a list of dates, so do we have any questions about that from anybody? You guys good? Yeah, good. I'll make a approve. So a second. All in favor? Motion carries 3-0. Have a quick burn ban update. Um, Dave, you want to touch on that? Yeah, we've had, due to some recent fires here this last week, uh, brought to our attention we need to go over a burn ban, try and get out a little more emphasis on it. Uh, talked with the prosecutor, the sheriff, the county attorney, as well as EMA. Uh, we found that there is a state statute that violating the burn ban is a class C misdemeanor pursuant to IC code. IC 14-23-7-5. This carries a uh, jail sentence up to 60 days and a fine of up to $500 and uh, they, for the violation of this ordinance. So just want to make that aware to remind people we are extremely dry. We've been two and a half months without any rain uh, and due to the recent fires, there are still people out here wanting to burn leaves burn trash in the burn barrels, things along this line. We've had corn fields, bean fields, go standing and not caught on fire. So hopefully this realizing this ordinance may slow this down that people will know that you don't burn. But it's going to take several days of significant rain in order to get this to a open, lift this and get it back going. So uh, this isn't, I guess, anything to be voted on. It's just a matter of reading it into the minutes as ex better explanation of the current burn ban that's in place. Anybody have any questions on it? Good. Okay. Okay. All right, we're done. Alicia? Yes. Hello, John Mad. Hello, Katie. Thank you for having me here this evening. I wanted, when I came back here in May, um, I was really kind of short on guardian advocates. So today my hope is to be able to give you guys a better understanding of what our organization is. We are, I'm Alicia Sturgis, I'm the executive director for the West. We were formally in 2022 Area 5 Adult Guardianship Program. We merged with our sister program at the beginning of 2023, split into two divisions. I'm the West. I've served five counties since 2020, and um, they're the East. So, um, give you a little bit of back history about guardian advocates. So, the state of Indiana, the Supreme Court did some investigation back in 2012 on um, the need and demand for an adult guardianship program. Um, so after their investigation, they concluded that there was a high need for it, so they created this BASIA program. 
um, volunteer advocates for seniors and incapacitated adults. They got funding through the Supreme Court for the, this specific organization. So out of the 92 counties, Vazia now serves 52 of the 92 counties. Each organization has their own county set. Again, Guardian Advocates is East and West. I'm West and I serve five of those 92 counties. Um, so what is a guardian? A guardian is a court-appointed fiduciary over an individual who exhibits incapacitative um, behavior, whether that is, um, and we help in making personal and financial health care decisions and managing their income and property. An incapacitated person is identified as somebody who is unable to manage those, those things, whether it's due to um, a physical illness, mental um, incapacities, illness, insanity, drunkenness, um, so substance abuse, incarceration, fraud. Um, our least restrictive alternative is guardianship. There's other least restrictive alternatives you all may be familiar with, such as a power of attorney or a health care representative. Unfortunately, we are strictly guardianship, so that's what we we work with pro bono attorneys within the community to obtain guardianship for individuals who are named by a physician, a medical doctor, as incapacitated. Um, but our least restrictive alternative under the guardianship is if the individual is able and has enough capacity to be able to function in their own residency, they live in their own apartment, then that would be considered our least restrictive alternative. Uh, majority of our individuals do reside in a long-term care facility or in group home settings. Um, I think we have two of the 35 that we currently have guardianship for that live in their own apartments. And it's very, very easy to manage those individuals. Um, if there's a high need individual, unfortunately, we probably need a little bit more assistance um, with that individual. So skipping down to page three, um, some of our donors and contributors for our organization does include the Supreme Court. Like I said, they, they did get funding um, through the Supreme Court for these grants that we filed every year in, in October. Um, they do um, oversee currently, last year, 2023, they, were, they awarded 1.3 million in matching funds um, to 20 volunteer-based programs, which were uh, 21 now, I believe. Um, these programs have assisted over 800 vulnerable adults in Indiana. So their two for one deal is if I get 37 five in my five counties, I can apply up to 75,000 for their matching grants. But the last three years, I think we've approximately gotten between 50 and 55,000 from the Supreme Court. There are other expectations on this grant. We have to have 10 volunteers a year and we have to have 10 guardianships a year. Our volunteer status is we, it's weak. And so recently we have hired our community outreach coordinator, Liberty Harp, to service our five counties and then as part-time and then we have a part-time for the East. Um, so we're hoping to get involved in the community more, working with United Ways. Um, I know she's around here particularly reached out to um, the attorney's office and um, we've actually gotten a new board member through um, uh, Andy's office and stuff like that and working with Lauren as well. Um, they're our main two go-to people for pro bono attorneys around here. So, um, but she's working with them to get in more connection with other resources in the community. We're hoping to be able to attend more events next year, get our name out there, who we are, what we do. Um, we get calls all the time for guardianship. So the role or the the way we get guardianship. Um, anybody and everybody can give me a call. Uh, my number's posted everywhere if they know me. Hospitals, um, uh, law enforcement, long-term care facilities, even a concerned neighbor, if they know of somebody who has potentially been hoarding or not getting groceries or not taking care of themselves and they observe this, they can give me a call or reach out to the Area 5 agency for my contact information and they'll send them my way. So these individuals give us a referral, just identifying the basic demographics on the individuals and their needs that aren't being met. And I will then do a face-to-face follow-up with that individual and create what's called a social profile. Um, I do have six years of service and guardianship through this organization 
and I do have a background of uh, mental health and health care, so I know things to look for when I'm speaking to these individuals. So when we go out, we're, we're basically setting a profile. Um, does this person meet our needs? Is it somebody we can absolutely serve? So we currently have three individuals that are on our waiting list. We've done a social profile on them. And then after we do that, we send out the physician's reports to the doctors and try to communicate the need to them that they have no other existing family or that can or, or is able to act as guardian. That's why we need to come in as a third party guardianship organization to help out because there's nobody else for these individuals in their lives. Whether they're estranged or they're just, they can't do it themselves or whatever. Um, so this um, on page five, I've gotten some examples in here. I think it's really um, critical that I explain to you some of these situations that we walk into. Um, this young lady and her dog, um, 33 years old, muscular dystrophy, we were able to meet up with her in this deplorable home that she was living in. She had been completely bed bound, um, muscular dystrophy, she can't use her legs. She'd been laying in the same bed for about a year, hadn't had a shower for about a year. She had, um, the house was infested with roaches, bed bugs, lice, you name it. There were two little children living there as well with the caretaker of this lady. And she had her little doggy. Um, so we got um, this individual into a long-term care facility intermittently um, until we could get her some type of least restrictive alternative such as her own apartment and an assisted living. Um, all the while I was I was the dog taker so this little chihuahua lived with me for about four months until we got her placed and now she lives in an assisted living flat assisted living gladly happily has her own kitchenette her own living room her own bedroom her own bathroom but she has 24-hour care so they're able to help her with her medications and getting showers and stuff like that so that has significantly increased her quality of life and that is what our organization is about is taking these people who have nobody to advocate for them and um, helping them out initially and I'm the one that goes to court I petition for the guardianships through these pro bono attorneys for all the individuals. Once we get the individuals established, that's when the volunteers come in. Liberty's job and responsibility is to hire and train the volunteers so that we can match them up with the individuals that are already established and they can continue to be our eyes and ears on these individuals. We have a strong connection with our volunteers. We're always communicating with them. Um, and they're doing it out of kindness of their hearts. They can, our state law requires through the guardianship program one visit a month. Our volunteers go well above and beyond and we have approximately nine right now that are actively seeing clients of the 35. And um, they, they go well above and beyond. They see them weekly, advocate with the providers, everything. So it really, really helps the organization. Um, so, that, that's just her story, but there's many stories like this. We have had some unfortunate stories where individuals were completely physically incapacitated. We tried to work with the hospital on getting a physician's report for the individual. She was a chronic alcoholic, could not walk, and was at the hospital detoxing for three days. It was prime COVID. Um, they couldn't get her placement at a mental hospital. They couldn't get her placement at a long-term care facility. So what did the hospital do? Without a physician's report showing her incapacitation, they discharged her back home. She died two weeks later of liver failure from going back to that alcohol abuse. Whereas my, my attempt to her was to say, this is not quality of life. Let us offer you a better quality of life. Let us help you out. And she had agreed to that willingly to go to the hospital. And unfortunately, that hospital didn't do her service because she is now deceased. So um, we see many, many situations like this all the time. But the joy of our organization is if you flip to the next one, um, these, these ladies right here, I mean, getting them out of the, the, the deplorable situations that they're living in and promoting better quality, teaching them life skills. Um, the one dancing, she's she is 32 years old you know we got her into a group home and um, her quality of life just learning how to cook you, you, we take stuff like that for granted every day because we know how to do it 
but teaching these individuals with intellectual disabilities or dementia how to live on their own again independently as much as possible um, and we do act as paid representatives for these individuals so um, and that is monitored by the courts as we are obligated to file 30 60 90 annual reports to the courts about their finances about the guardianship and which I do annually on all our clients empowerment our individuals work uh, supported decision making um, just because they're incapacitated doesn't mean they're invalids um, so they still have the right to make decisions we're just there to help support those decisions that they're making and then as you see if you flip over to the next page um, what is the role of a volunteer and a staff member I've kind of just briefly gone over that um, the, the volunteer essentially does have the ability to make the same decisions as we do but we ask them to to talk to us about any serious important decisions that they make and again flip to the next page you've got our volunteers some more of our clients and then uh, a very important um, page so it's really hard to put numbers on this organization because a lot of times communities will be like oh well you're only serving five in our community well we have a population of a hundred thousand so how are you meeting any needs and the thing is is that these individuals that we are serving are the ones that are slipping through the cracks the one that nobody reaches and and, and just starts to um, unfortunately so where APS would step in, but APS isn't able to remove them from the home or necessarily has the grounds to remove them from the home. So again, we are able to go in, do the social profile, say, you know, we can offer you services, better quality of life, and then work with providers on um, getting those. So if you look specifically at Fulton County, we currently serve six. We have four individuals out of this six that currently still live in Fulton County. The other two individuals, because of group home placement, have to live in one of our other <coughs> five counties. Um, but they do well. They all do great. Um, we had a brother and sister initially when we started in Fulton County. Um, mom was abusing and using and giving them drugs and there was sexual abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse, all that with the boyfriend. It's just a whole big old mess with both of these intellectually disabled individuals. Probably IQs of, I know she's probably about 13 and he's probably about an eight. So going through all that, so they got removed from the home and into group home placement and they unfortunately don't have contact with mom anymore. I wish she would have been a better person to be in, in their lives because we would we would have definitely supported that. But unfortunately, those are the, the decisions she's made. So the children do not, I call them children, sorry. They, the adults do not have contact with the mother anymore. Um, but they do good. Um, we become their family. We become their sisters, their, their mothers, their aunts, their nieces. However the age is, we assume that role. Staff, we have two staff. We have me, executive director, paperwork, clients, you name it, I do it. And then you got my case manager, who is fantastic. And she primarily serves Fulton County. She's here to see them every week, making sure that the provider's needs are being met with the client's needs being met. She does a fantastic job. So, and we currently have three pending, um, which like I said, um, once we get more volunteers, I hope to, and that takes money to, hire a, a, that position to hire and train volunteers so um, and in total we've we've helped um, 18 altogether so approximately out of budgets um, we work on about a two hundred and thirty thousand dollar budget we, we put that standard very high um, last year we had the same standard roughly about the same standard and we brought in a po approximately about one hundred forty thousand so we were nowhere near. Um, again, that will just take us getting out with the community and, and getting familiar and getting those resources connected. But, so we've been so grateful because the commissioners and the city council has been serving our organization since 2020. And um, thankfully, and so I'm back here again and because our numbers are still kind of low in this community, approximately 9% of a $230,000 budget would be about $20,000.
So with the city council, the commissioners, and NCIF, that puts it about 18,000 um, for the community as a whole for us to serve. Again, unfortunately, I can't put numbers on these things, and that's the best that I can give you. Um, but we are here again asking for a $6,000 donation to continue this service in the community. What did we get last, last time? 5,000. Five. Yep. So you're up at $1,000. Yes, please. yes. And then the city council, we're, um, I've been speaking with Amy. We're, I'm gonna meet at the host center come February. I didn't get the opportunity to really explain to them like I just did to you guys thoroughly at the last city council meeting, and I would love to do that for them as well. So that's, I'm gonna be meeting with them in February at the Hope to better explain. Do you use them, Mindy Travis, or? Yeah, we use them. It's a good resource, it's, I mean, it is the most vulnerable population, so it is one that slip through the cracks, the one that they help, so. It may not be huge in numbers, but definitely be it's huge. So. Yeah. You okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Can I entertain a motion in for uh, twenty? You looking for twenty-five? Yeah. Uh, Do we know the council? The council, what they put in for? Yeah. We have. We can make it work. We can make it work. Okay. So make a motion for six thousand dollars. I'll second. Okay. Any questions for anybody? Very good. Uh, all in favor? Motion carries three up. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, gentlemen. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then I have a call from uh, Pastor Larry from the Church of God. They're looking for permission to use the west side of the courthouse for a prayer service on November 3rd at 5 p.m. to uh, pray for the elections. And Okay, we have the Purdue contract. Um, Holly, you looked that over? Yes, it's fine. Same as last year, except for the dollar amount. Uh, Purdue is looking for $127,510. What did we pay last year? $100. Can you tell us? Can you look it up? I think it was around 120, but I could be wrong. That sounds about right. I think everybody's, everybody's budgets are going up. Would it have been around this time last year? Yeah. Yeah. Let me see if I can. Oh, they might have come in the late. Late last year. Yeah. It has to be close to what it was. Okay. Does anybody have any questions on the Purdue contract? Okay. Does that have to go based on council approval? Uh, it's in our budget. Okay. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll, take right. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Motion carries 3 0. Okay. Department updates. John Geyer Highway. We've got a couple of permits for you. The first one is permit request 2442. David McKinley makes a request to permit to install a drain under County Route 150 North, 680 feet west of County Road 1050 West. Be a direction for that with and talk. I don't have any issues with it. Okay. Any questions for John? Is that the motion to approve? Second. All in favor? Motion carries three. Second one is permit request 2443 from CSN Groups. Half of Comcast cable. They're requesting a directional bore of an inch, one to two inch fiber optic duct 
48 inches under County Road four, or 550 North at 208 East on 550 North. Um, they are also requesting permission to cut the asphalt there, uh, the pothole to locate utilities if it's necessary. You okay with that? Yeah. Does that does history of those help when, when that flashes and people will like slow down? You think? I mean, is it a? Yeah, I mean, because I don't think people purposely. I mean, most of them are just general public that are driving through there from from this community. So I don't think they're purposely doing it. But like you said, it's a nice road and it's it's a rural setting. And I just I really think just to get moving down. Yeah, just get moving down there. But yeah, it's it, it, it something needs done out there. So. What is that? Thirty five. Yeah. Yeah. And the speed limit won't change. You're just kind of alert them to that. Yeah, it'd be a permanent fixture. That would, it'd be a, a, a basically a speed limit sign that lights up and tells you how fast you're going. It'll say. Oh, like yeah. Acre. Yeah. Acre. Acre. Lake has a couple. The the Lake Association put up. Fulton's got one. I'm assuming the town put that up. Would you use both ways in John? Or I think if you want to really get your. Uh, Get it, get it. I, I know it wasn't discriminative with us. We're on the right track. It's both directions. Yeah. I don't know. What's, what's your thought? Six thousand, quite a bit. Yeah, I don't have the money readily for it. I mean, something maybe we could do the first year, or we can appropriate. Um, I mean, it just. I don't know. That's why I brought it up for discussion. Yeah, that's a little more I was thinking. It might be. I do have. Solid for it. That that's one quote. I've got others coming into me, but I haven't got them yet. They could be some yeah, Why don't we wait and yeah. see what they come in, see if you can get them a little cheaper. And this is city and county both, isn't it? That's county. That's county. Oh, the whole county? Could raise the speed limit, that's free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think there is a need. It's just a matter of, you know, can we actually swing in? Yeah. Why don't you see what the next ones come in, maybe we, we can get a little cheaper. Sure, justify it a little better. Thank you for looking at that, John. Yeah. yeah. Now, update you want to get more information. Um, on equipment, we did receive the first Western Star out of the two that we ordered this year. Uh, so it's sitting there at the highway. It's getting, as soon as the second one comes in, we'll take him to W.A. Jones. 
new one to work on, I think, in November to start on. So we should have it by the end of the year. Um, I do have a uh, transfer request in today for you. Uh, it's, uh, I don't have it written down there, but I do have it here. It's $6,000 coming from the our uh, typical new river fund, miscellaneous highway. And what that is for is for tiling that we done along 400 north that we paved. We widened and raised that road and created a side ditch that was about three foot deep, right? And actually, the white line actually wasn't even fully on the road. Uh, so we put a 15 inch tile in there and closed that. So to you're just moving money around to pay for that tile? Yeah. It was a very needed project. Um, and then I have, uh, I sent to you late today, and if you just want to look it over, well, I guess this one's uh, a change order for Rule 31. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's all uh, basically, what NDOT requires is anytime you make a change, $20,000 more or less, uh, one way or the other, uh, you have to have a change order. So there's, in this, our original bid uh, for 31 was $4,063,395.85. We came in at $3,609,642.03. There were some changes because of uh, we didn't have to take out all the concrete that we assumed. We didn't have to do as much wedge leveling. Um, there was just a lot of savings. So, I mean, one savings was $28,000 for uh, not having a field office. So we saved that. Um, anyway, long story short, be getting back uh, so we save four hundred and fifty three thousand seven hundred fifty three dollars uh, we get twenty percent of that back which was our match so in total we're going to get back ninety thousand seven hundred fifty dollars Signed the change order, and then I, I'm the other signature. The ERC is. Okay. So. All right. Uh, I entertain a motion to approve that change order. John just described. So moved. Second. In all favor? And I also sent you later today, and if you want to hold these off till the next meeting, that's fine. Uh, the one was a uh, authorization to proceed with USI for small structure inspection, which they've been doing our small structures for many years now. I'm not sure how many. Um, but we've got uh, 23 small structures that need inspected. It'd be at $350 each, totally uh, project fee of $8,050. On that one, yeah, just where I had the little okay. posted thing. What do you classify as small structures? Uh, so a bridge is 20 feet span or greater, and a small structure is that down to roughly 48 inch height okay. or concrete logs, whatever it might be. Okay. Every so many years, we try to get so many inspected. There's thousands yeah. in the county. Yeah. yeah, really, I ain't had time to look it over. And we can hold, we can postpone that. Is that a big hurry? Well, when does your old one expire? When do you, when do you have to have uh, start it? So we don't have that on contract right now that the last contract has been fulfilled. Okay. Okay. Uh, but it's for winter work. Let's put it on the agenda for the next time so we, we can have if, if you guys are okay with that, yeah. look over, look yeah. over. That's, that's fine. 
Uh, the other one I had was an on-call agreement with USI okay, uh, for next year. And we do one every year. Mm -hmm. So um, I have that. If you want to take time and look it over, too, we can come back to that next meeting. Or you in a hurry? No. No? Okay. Let, let's do them both next meeting. If, if you guys are okay with this works. Yeah. 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 I have no, no issues with that. I just like to look over something. Yeah, and like I said, I sent it to you late today because I didn't get it till then. I think that's everything I had for you tonight. Okay. Okay. Anything else for John? I believe so. Okay. Okay, John, thank you. Uh huh. Thank you. Shoot. Okay. We have a uh, Dawn EMA. Volunteers go and help out with the car show slash um, yeah chili cook off for the city this last weekend yeah and uh, that was big success they were very very appreciative to have those and those three volunteers had to be there at six o'clock in the morning so um, the city was very appreciative of that the LAPC group has they're going to be rescheduling a exercise that they are to do and um, the committee will be getting together on rescheduling that particular uh, exercise and that makes us grant makes us grant compliant with having that so um, the twenty thousand dollars I know I brought up before that we thought were grant funds those funds are already there they're already allocated is the way I'm understanding it. So we do have the one bid, which falls around 10,000 of the 20. So I'm going to reach out for a couple more things to be done for the building on that 20,000 that's allocated. So as soon as I have that, so we're in good graces, and we'll put all that in the right order. So um, I know we were talking about whether it had to have three, you know, three or not. Um, but it is going to the newspaper to try one more time with everybody to get those approved. So I know Carrie worked with it, um, but I'll get a hold of the shopper's guide and the signal both tomorrow. Get them in there, get one more round and get that. So we can get this taken care of, get that money um, put to rest. Uh, right now I have two grants that are open that I'll be applying for this week. One is that good old EMPG grant. It did open up. So um, I'll get a, be getting that one started process but and the other one is too and I don't remember off the top of my head but they're both for um, EMA and the grants that we use so I'll get both of those started this week I was at EMA conference last week Monday through Friday um, learned some things learned a few things um, moving forward that's going to help out a lot and as I said at our last meeting for those who weren't there on the morning meeting with the commissioners is I did get my three and four hundred put in those are done those move forward make us comply anyways I'm tired guys <laughs> I was gone all last week and I'm taking off um, this next week I will be leaving as of Thursday and be back on Tuesday um, and as always I have my volunteers ready and ready to go for all of us so um, I know there's a few of us gonna be gone but that particular exercise that we were going to be doing would have been this next Saturday which is also early voting in the Grass Creek area where we were having the exercise. So we really had to back up a lot of different areas on that one. So, any questions? Dawn, some of, when you post this for the, for the grants, how, how do they contact you to, if they want to bid on something out there? What's oh, now that, that one there for that 20,000 allocated. Yeah. Um, I mean, do you have a list of stuff you're trying to accomplish for people to bid on or what? Yeah. Yeah, I do have, um, what we originally wanted done was the windows replaced and all the exterior doors, excluding the bay doors. Those all needed replaced. They're like still those single pane windows and they're just off. So that bid right now, and that building, the way it was constructed, the way I understand it has to be peeled back, 
put in and change. So, um, so did they talk to you or who did they get a hold of? They got a hold of Carrie. Carrie. Okay. So. So I put it in the Sentinel, and um, I will. I, I'll get with Carrie in the morning if he wants to be the main contact for that. Okay. Well, I can throw it on the radio in the morning when I, I just. Yeah. Yeah. Just curious who the contacts. So, that'd be so the other thing with that being said, with um, the ten, it's around ten, just over ten. Um, for the windows doors, da 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 da. We were looking at possibly also doing um, some garage doors. Those neither one of those bay doors have garage door openers on them. You know, it's it's a rather pain, especially in inclement weather, um, with the two trucks. And then we're also depending, uh, possibly pouring, going through and putting in, getting rid of a carpet, going to a nice um, laminate type flooring. So, so you have a list of a few items you'd like to get bids on. That I'll get the rest of the quotes okay. on to get us at that mark. Okay. You know, but when you're already looking at one said ten thousand, yep. and you know you got twenty. So okay. thank you for mentioning that tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Anything else for Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, thank guys. You. Thank you. Okay. Um, sure. That was not Good evening, Charles. Good evening. I emailed out the reports last week. Any questions on those or anything? Pretty standard month. Um, we had, as of last Tuesday, since when I printed it off for the committee for the council, we had 126 inmates. 47 were holding for Grant County, 19 for Howard County, and six federal inmates. We invoiced for a little over 117,000 in the month of September for Howard County inmates and federal inmates. Um, we got the estimates for the 2025 Tahoes. Um, they actually went up at $2,200 from the 2024. So we were pleasantly surprised with that, considering all the police car issues that other people are having, different manufacturers. Um, went over the burden ban. Food contract, I sent you guys a copy of this. Holly, you saw that as well. Um, I guess I'm looking for a motion to, uh, or asking you guys if you can approve this so I can sign. And, it only went up 4% from last year. Um, the, the meals are only going up between 9 and 10 cents a meal per inmate. So, yeah. Yes. Thank you for that. So. Yeah. They, they do great for us. And, you know, they're really, really, really happy with them. So, make a motion to approve. Second. Okay. All in favor? Motion carries. Mm -hmm. um, they've started on the maintenance building. Um, they wanted their second installment today for their maintenance building and then explain to them how county government works. And they were afraid that maintenance pump the brakes on it a little bit. So I went ahead and wrote them a check out of commissary and then we'll just get reimbursed out of the, the building storage fund for that. So um, I think that's all I've got for you unless you guys have anything for me. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate your answer. Brittany, 901. Good evening. Good evening. I just have a couple things. I sent an email regarding the modified EMS policy, so I was hoping to get some approval on that today. Um, it's similar to the one that you guys had before. I just changed some verbiage and actually worked with Barry to kind of restructure that into the way that we foresee um, the policies in the future to be formatted and put together. Any questions on that? How do you see that work? Are you going to have each employee initial it so you've got it in your file and that you're going to Yeah, so it? once um, it's approved, what I'll do is I'll go in just kind of modify it with a line for the signature of, and then give a copy to them and also file that to make sure that everyone's clear on it. Yeah, they, what they're acknowledging with their signature is that they've read it. They right. agree with it, it doesn't matter if they agree with it. Sure. It's just what, that they've read it, correct? Yeah, that they've read it, and then obviously we have a leg to stand on it. The policy is, yeah. you just know. Just like a personal policy. Right. Just have to We've already had some kind of issues with this. Yeah. Um, so it's best to get it in order that way, you know, if something else turns up that now they say that they've seen it and they've read it and understand it and kind of open the floor for them to ask questions or why we're doing that. Okay, so. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll prove this real quick. Okay, we'll, sorry. Uh, so we have the 911 Communication Standard of Operating Procedures Policy here. Do I have a motion to accept? I do. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor?
we want to do Okay. Well, thanks for doing that. Um, let's see. So as of today, we had 11. We have 11 full-time dispatchers, 12 including me. Um, two of our new dispatchers, or two of the two, um, started today. So one was in the morning, and then my second one shows up at 8 o'clock to start her first shift. Um, right now we have one part-timer, and I, I think it's few and far between when she's able to work, so I actually have posted for um, accepting new applications for part-time help. I haven't really received anything on that yet, but that's kind of where I'd like to go. But what's the number of them? There's quite a few of them you can use. Yeah, I'm pretty there? sure Christina told me seven, but seven. my brain's a little fuzzy right now, but I believe okay. it's seven. Okay. I don't think we'll need that many, but it'd be nice to have a little bit of backbone to have. So you can switch them off yes. or call one of them. Yes. So we've had some sickness going through the center, which has allowed me to work a little bit more in dispatch. Um, so also, in addition to me working, we've had to kind of use the overtime budget because I can't work all of it. So, you know, that's another thing that's going to benefit getting these new, I mean, it's going to take about six to 12 months for the new dispatchers to be trained. But then in addition, if we can find some part time, that'll help with the overtime budget for sure. Sorry, I made this list when I was working dispatch, so I'm trying to. Sure. <laughs> um, but anyways, with all the sickness and stuff, the dispatchers have done great working alongside me and just making the schedule work. So we've been able to keep things covered. So the teamwork is fantastic right now, and I really appreciate them for, for doing that. Uh, okay, so last week I requested to have a meeting with the job classification committee regarding the assistant director's pay structure. Um, without being consulted or notified of the meeting, the job classification committee made um, a recommendation to the council. The discussion at the council meeting um, was kind of misrepresented or mispresented regarding the intent of my request. Um, so I just wanted to, for the record, the way it was translated wasn't the way that I had seen it going. It was more of just a conversation I wanted to have with the classification committee versus an actual decision. If that makes sense. I just had some questions about the structure of the pay versus actually something changing. Um, so I just wanted to note that, that it didn't go the way that it should have. But, um, also, I appointed Jennifer Duff as my assistant 911 director. The next pay period, she'll kind of start her duties, but we have one dispatcher that's going to be out of the office for medical purposes. And then obviously, we're <coughs> training the two, so she's not going to be able to fully go into the assistant duties um, probably for six to 12 months until those new dispatchers are are trained but she has been appointed and lastly I have completed my EMD and IDAC training so I'm legal to dispatch so unless you got anything for me that's all I got you love it you don't yes thank you thank you thank you Kathy, you have anything for treasures? Okay. Uh, let's see what you up. Okay. You guys had a chance to travel with the request over? Yes, I have. Okay. We'll sign those stack afterwards. Uh, the minutes for you guys, you know, eight minutes. Yeah. Eight minutes. I didn't. Is it? We got some. I guess it was notes. Yeah, that was your. Uh, you guys had a chance to go over the financials, claims, transfers, any appropriations, anything we got laying here? Any questions, concerns on that? Okay, we have a payroll for 1018 of $271,652.98 with a deduction of $122,704.36. Okay, we have insurance uh, disbursement for six or uh, nine twenty-six of twenty-four to ten. Two of twenty-four at six thousand eight hundred eighty-five dollars and four cents. Yeah, insurance docket uh, October fees fifty-one thousand nine hundred twenty-six dollars and nineteen cents. Insurance disbursement for ten three to ten nine twenty-four of twelve thousand one hundred fifteen dollars and sixty-eight cents. Uh, lift distribution seven hundred forty three thousand 
Transfer um, from the Public Defender Board of $9,500 uh, I guess they've got a, from, the, from the Investigator Education and Witness Depositions to the Reimbursement Conflict Attorney. Transfer from the treasurer, uh, $415 from dues and maintenance of equipment to mileage. We have the health department, uh, $1,000 from repaired equipment to mileage. County Highway, $6,000 from the Tippecanoe River to Miscellaneous Highway, the trial project we just discussed. The health Department, $1,000 from, from three buying records to mileage. We have the drainage board, $2,482.96 from office supply to furniture. Transfer to wrong account already approved in commissioner's meeting for updated furniture results. Okay, I have the uh, report that's on here. We did this uh, several months ago. Uh, Why it says the state changed five words in here. Um, it's the on-site sewage ordinance. Do I need to put the original ordinance number on here or just today's? We're redoing this is today's. We're not amending it, we're redoing it, correct? You might as well, yeah. Okay. Um, we have the Fulton County On-Site Suit System Ordinance 1021-2024. I will not be reading. What? Well, I said it's got 48 lines it. already. It's got 45 pages. <laughs> if anybody wants it, I'll get you a copy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I'd entertain a motion to have, I can do all three readings on this tonight, right? That's we have already. I entertain a motion to have uh, the second, third reading by title. So, so moved. All in favor? Okay, we've got Fulton County on site sewage ordinance system of uh, ordinance 1021-2024. I'd entertain a motion to approve that ordinance. So, so moved. Second. All in favor? That motion carries three. I don't know why it's in a pitch for that. Well, I got sleepy just reading. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs>
get that moving. So we're just going to put something together and then present it to the pastors. We've had some delay in comments back from them. So um, Kathy and Beth and I will be meeting with the Beaven Home uh, the 31st of October to discuss the opioid funding and a potential possibility to uh, continue to look at what a partnership looks like. Dave and I uh, met with somebody on the um, virtually to discuss potential other partnerships with Beaven Home. So trying to figure out what it looks like to bring them here more consistently. Um, if we can be creative in that. So we just keep the conversation going. Um, we finally received the results of the transportation study, thanks to Doug, who used his charm to get that. So um, we thought we were never going to get the results of that. That was the IUK study that the students did for us, in which we had put a survey out to understand what the needs were for transportation. This has been over a year process. Um, I guess it's free, so we can't complain. Um, but we did receive really great results. Doug and I just talked about it. I chased him down and talked to him about it before I came here. So he wants to be the one to give you the full uh, gamut of what it is. So I am not to steal his thunder is what he said to me tonight. <laughs> so, but uh, it was very interesting and our hope is to meet with Jillian because a lot of the information was related to the uh, employer support with transportation, which was very interesting. So I'll let Doug tell you all about that. Um, we are, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, with the Dora, we are not going to be doing the special event, Dora, so we will not need the sidewalks. Uh, so we are going to be discussing that tomorrow, um, looking at um, trying to create something that makes sense for everybody and listening to all of our stakeholders. Um, so that will be a good conversation tomorrow that we're going to have uh, for the city of Rochester. Um, and I think that's it. I can't remember. I've got so many different parts and pieces that we're working on, but. I'm blessed to be able to move all of these different things forward, and um, it takes a lot of work. I'm learning the art of patience. Nothing is fast, but we are getting, we are moving things forward, and um, blessed to be able to come alongside EMA and, and uh, Kathy and others with Dave and, and folks to be able to move projects forward. So, if I have forgotten anything, I cannot remember. We do have our, our quarterly meeting November 20th. Um, free lunch. Come check it out. Um, I don't know who the speakers are because Jan Sawyer bosses me about that. So she's the one that bosses me around and sets those up. But that will be another um, chance for folks to learn about resources that are in the community. And the folks here are going to come and speak with Vazia um, in February. So, yeah. So I think that's it. Okay. Thank um, you. Yeah. I'll probably comment here a minute now. So, uh, and you new business, Rick? Um, oh yeah, car show downtown. What, 750 cars and all that? Thanks to everybody who put that on. Sound like it was a great success. So, need to be proud of themselves. So, so thank you. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe so. Uh, no. Office, public, any new business? So, uh, yeah, I'll get them right here because I got public comment now. So, anybody? Everything you like that. Yeah. 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 My name is Helen Bernard. Um, my dad committed suicide back in December. I'm sorry. And my goal here today is I don't want to see families have to go through what I went through. I had to clean the mess up because we couldn't afford two thousand dollars to have somebody come in for my dad. So I had to do that. Um, I want to see if there was any way that we can create some help for others. Yes, my dad passed. He's gone. I can't, I can't bring him back. But I can try to help others in that situation. Um, I have spoke to Andy before about this. I have spoke to the mayor, and that's why I'm here today, to get my voice heard. And if we can try to get something going on for the county, I will do anything in my power. I will help whatever I can do to get this forward. 
Well, again, we're real sorry for your loss. Mm -hmm. it's hard. Um, it's not a time to pass. You know, I go through it every day of my life. I smoke blood every day of my life. Nobody should ever have to go through what I went through with my father. And I am here to say, if I can help anybody out there, I am here and I will do anything to bring it forward. Just to have somebody there to say, you don't have to do that. Because we can have the money. We can do this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure we we'll want that. <clears throat> Something I'm talking about. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to discuss that. I, I appreciate you. It's a hard thing to bring up. It's an everyday about that. It's mentally, physically. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll, we'll discuss it and try to figure out a plan and what, what options we have. And, and I really appreciate it. Like some money. Really do. Yeah. Try and to do something. I'm here. I will do whatever I can do in any way. We appreciate that. And thank you so much for listening to me. Yeah, to thank you. Too. Would you give us your name and number, Travis? You got her name. And she got her card. I assume you're going to reach out. Yes, okay, I'll reach okay. out and okay. get in yeah. contact. She yeah. come up with. Okay, I really appreciate it. I really don't. I mean, anything, anything I can do, just call me. I'll be there. Okay. Um, I'm willing to, and I keep in contact with Pat. So, thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other public comment? What kind of help are we talking about? Well, she, she's looking for financial help. Now, isn't there some programs in place already to help with funerals and no, mental it's health not the, and all that? It's not, it's not talking that. Funeral, no. We're talking the, clean the room, up. the situation, the clean up. There the is department. people out there to help, but it costs $2,000 to do to come in and clean blood and stuff like that. And families out here, they ain't got it like that. So we all want us to go and clean them, that's it. Yeah. Any other public comment? Ross. I'm a little concerned with a burn ban making that uh, public knowledge uh, this morning we went over to a field to pick corn, looked up across the road and a lady's burning trash in a barrel, no screen or anything on it. And I went over and told her, I said, hey, there's a burn ban in Fulton County. Well, I didn't know that. She made the kind of, well, that alfalfa's green, it won't burn, but two feet from that burn barrel was dead grass in a fence row. And I, there's just so many people that don't know what's going on out there. Um, we've had two fires of our own personally, or three fires actually, where we've had to have the fire department out, which they're excellent. But man, it's, I, I'm worried about somebody getting hurt or a crop loss. Um, it's a real concern for the county. Mm -hmm. uh, the way I understand, uh, it's rumored, but at uh, Cass County uh, is finding people. I mean, in other words, if they've got a fire that's uh, not washed or not actually set, why they're finding. Um, so, and I hate to be the one have to call Travis or you know the fire department all the time, but man, you know it's a problem. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know what to do about it. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. someone said Facebook. I mean, everybody looks at Facebook. Maybe some people could get something done, put it out public on Facebook. I don't know. Uh, we could try. We could. I know. I, I was. I was on out this afternoon, and yeah. yeah, we'll definitely address it as, as much as we can. It is a concern for all of us. You know, it's super dry out. So. And when it went out, I did post it on the 911 site too. Unfortunately, the old 911 site was hacked, so I don't have as many followers on the new one, but. We try to push it out from 911 to as much as we can. Well, that's not the problem we have with a lot of things is, is getting the word out mm. today. I mean, if, if, 
for some reason it just seemed like it, it it's hard to get it out there yeah. I mean on various stuff that we do and, and it's I know the, the paper and radio do a great job you know getting it out it's you know people don't subscribe to something or they're you know they're listening or whatever and uh, it's, you would think with technology today it, it would be so easy to get door out but right. it, I think it's almost harder now than it used to be for some reason mm -hmm. it, it's tough and we struggle with that so but we'll, I'll mention it tomorrow on the radio. And we can, uh, whatever county offices we have to have Facebook, we'll throw it out on there. It's, and you'll be on the radio again in the morning, you said? Yeah, I'll be on there. Well, yeah. I know I did talk to Randy this afternoon, and he said that he would put it, tell the DJs to periodically mention that we do have a bird band. And I think you heard, I mean, I read through as far as the planes and the, if you're caught, Lighting a fire is potential up to 30 days or 60 days in jail, $500 fine. Somebody has to call the sheriff. But, and tell yeah, somebody's got to call the sheriff and tell them. Call Travis out there. But, uh, but I think that's something we probably need to look at. I know we spoke to Travis earlier. Uh, yeah. To re, and I forget how Travis said that. Well, we have to redo our ordinance. Is that correct? I, I think you would have to put penalties in the ordinance first to be actually be able to enforce the ordinance as a violation to send it to Holly as a county well, attorney. Well, yeah. But you know, our animal control ordinance that I file, they don't, we don't have a <coughs> fine in that. I, I'm the one who makes the yeah, that, That's Holly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's her band. <laughs> 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 we, 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 you give the ordinance violation for the animal ordinance and turn it into me and I file it with the court mm -hmm. and get a cause number and then we have a hearing. So that's how that works. So mm -hmm. technically that's what we can do. On the specific ordinance? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm right now waiting on, I did put into IDHS today for the code verification and qualifications behind it. So I got the question into the fire marshal's office on the same thing. So, like Holly said, I believe the way I'm seeing it right now until I get that final answer is it's left up to the prosecutor on amounts. That's as what, yeah. Well, right, it and if it's, an, if it's the statute, if we get them under the Indiana Code, then that does go to the prosecutor and it's the C misdemeanor. Yeah. If you get them just on an ordinance violation, like the animal ordinance violation, then that goes to me and I file. So, yeah, once I have that, obviously the three of you will get that. When I get that question, I sent it off today in an email waiting on that question. I didn't have it as the time I left. Um, but I did just have a thought come across my mind of getting with uh, John Flint here. And I know we have possibly the use of some signboards. You know, our, our electric signboards that we put out when we have traffic incidents and stuff like that. And uh, I think we might be able to put some wording on those in some key places in the county. I mean, Travis, I, my big suggestion is you start filing them as misdemeanors, the word's going to get Oh, out. I think so. And that's going to be the point. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's, that's kind of a big step on the first that's, I mean, it is. And as long as we've got the prosecutor on board with, right. with the ability to drop it where it needs to be. So. Right. Well, I, mean, I guess that's my thing. I mean, it's right it's up to. Yeah, I mean, he could charge a dollar <laughs> yeah. fine plus court costs on that. So right now, somebody's rolling down the road and they see somebody burning trash and they call it in. Right. So they violated our ordinance. So do you set a fine of $50 I, for that? I can set whatever fine I want. That's how I do it with the animal cases. Okay. And if they're not very nice, then... Okay. I <laughs> <decide>. <laughs> if they right. don't if I, with the police officers, then I think I once I get this question, like I said, I called the fire marshal's office today and talked with them point blank, and I know that I was aware of your situation. So, if we put in one, you know, and then we look at the loss, you know, are they are we now going to have our resident file against the other? And it, it's just, and that's why. Under the criminal aspect of it, they can get restitution through the prosecutor's yes. office. Yes. If so if it's a big one and burns a field down. Well, that's a little, a little different. Right. Second offense. I'm just, you know, Travis and I were talking. Well, yeah, we'll use our judgment. Yeah, yeah, they can just that. give them a warning. I mean, yeah. I think I think the fire department so far, that's what they're doing. First call out, they're doing get warnings. warnings. Um, I talked to TJ, and the, just in reference to the Akron 
Um, I talked to TJ last night, and then I talked with Aaron again today, and um, that's what that's what they did. The the call out they did the warning, and um, both knowing that they'd go forward with action. Right. Right. So. Kind of like a speeding ticket. Well, it, it maybe something RTC could do. I don't know what, where they have their banners or something on on their their channel. Maybe they can put a we're in a burn ban or something too. I mean, I'm not sure how try to reach all the resources we can. And along, get those, along those lines, all the schools 15 years ago got those fancy electronic boards right. Right. under a public safety grant That's true. for yeah. community community awareness. So I would think they would be an easy tell. You got to put this up on your electronic board we're under a burn ban. That'll catch a lot of people. Yeah. I was real lucky with mine. It's a neighbor and they have agreed to pay for the damages on the cornfield. So, but that's not gonna happen every time. Yeah. So I'm real lucky. Yeah, you are. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll do our best, I guess, to get it out there. Buy some flies and stick one of your windows. Grab flies. RHS, bird bait, you know. Yeah. If you see a neighbor's lighting fire, tell her to put it out. Or they're subject to a call to the sheriff. All right. Thank you for that. Is Thank anybody you. else? Okay, here you go. Entertain motion recess. Second. All favor. All right. <laughs>